So today we're doing something that kind of plays off of what I've already done before in a career simulation, but I know this has been done in other like communities as well. I think in 2K there's Click Productions. This is where it kind of started getting the idea in my mind. And then I've also seen it in the FIFA community as well. So I know this has been done before and this is kind of building off of what I've done already in the career sims so today we're gonna to be doing a career re-simulation we're gonna take some players from in the past even currently but we're taking players whose careers just never really panned out injuries you know just didn't really do well whatever it is we're gonna be doing some players that just didn't really pan out and today's player is gonna be troy tulowitzki so there we Go. That's what we're going to be doing today. Troy Tulowitzki's career resim. It can be him being traded somewhere, but we're going to be starting him with the Colorado Rockies. So I hope you guys do enjoy the video. If you do, hit that thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoy the content. And of course, get in the comment section. Let me know what player you would like to do or you would like to see next. I'm not going to be doing rebuilds until a big name free agent signs. So rebuilds are kind of on the back burner right now. We're going to be doing a couple career sims, maybe some other videos along the way, but I hope you do enjoy it. So let's get into it. Alrighty, so let's take a look at Troy Tulowitzki in his rookie season. So here we are. He is going to be the shortstop. We're going to move Trevor Story over to second base. We're going to take a look at rookie Tulo really fast. So 73 overall, he's getting a little bit of a morale boost. The contract was a little iffy. I wasn't 100% sure what his rookie contract looked like. So this is kind of what I gave him. It, it, we'll see how it works. But yeah, as you can see, 73 overall, A potential, 6'3", 205, and 21 years old was his rookie year. It was back in 2006. So there we go. So this is what we're going to be rocking with. And let's take a look and see his attributes. So you're probably thinking, well, Tula was so much better. Well, the thing is, if I boost his attributes too much, then, you know, he's just going to be like the best rookie straight out the gate. He's going to take over MLB way too quickly. And the whole point of this was to make it somewhat of a realistic resim. So I feel like these are decent rookie attributes. The fielding, I feel like is really, really, really good, like really representative of what Tulo was. And the bat will definitely come around. Because if I bump it up too much more, I think I had his hitting stats all in the 60s and it made him like a 77 overall. And I felt like that was just a little bit too high for a rookie. I just I just think that was just a little bit too high. And even too low in real life, his rookie season wasn't that great. It was his season two, three, and four that he really started to take off and really make a name for himself. So for too low, this is where we're going to leave it for now. I'm going to train the hitting stats so that those are the ones that kind of boost the most. And we'll go from there so let's go take a look see where he is in the lineup i decided to put him in the sixth spot i might even move him down just a little bit more so how this is going to work i'm not going to get involved in any way shape or form i just want to make sure that he's part of the lineup the only thing that really will like change is that you know the team may trade him you know crazy things may happen he may sign with a different team who knows what happens I did turn down the trade slider a little bit so that they're not crazy trades happening 24 seven, but there still will be some trade action along the way. I'll inform you if any trades do happen that kind of change the outlook of this team. But I feel like for now, this is where Tulo is. He's gonna be playing shortstop for the Rockies. So here we go. So season one comes to a close and for the team didn't really go too well. You can see 78 and 84. So with the season not going to plan for the team, I'm kind of interested to see how Tulo did in his rookie season. We have no notifications here for the league leaders or awards, which is pretty disappointing because obviously that means no rookie of the year, no gold glove, nothing like that, which is which is pretty sad, which is pretty sad to see. But I'm pretty interested to see how Tulo did in his rookie year. You guys can see the team as a whole. And um, let's take a look here and see what Tulo did. And just that brief little glimpse right there. Looks like he's doing pretty well. 79 overall after his rookie season. His hitting stats have gone through the roof. He's looking like quite the player already. Even his fielding stats went up a little bit as well. And we'll take a look at his season. 123 games, 22 or 21 doubles, 22 home runs, 65 RBIs, 38 walks, 65 strikeouts. 
292 average, a 350 on base percentage, 492 slugging, and an 842 OPS. Okay, I like seeing that. And a war of 3.1. All right, he's got the cannon quirk as well after his rookie year. And I'm kind of interested to see where that put him in rookie of the year voting. Third behind Andy Young, who had quite the season. 81 RBIs, pretty similar home run total. Just quite a few more doubles. And then Shogo Akiyama, who, okay, more doubles, a little bit more RBIs. And I can see why Tulo was third in the voting for rookie of the year. So, so far, so good. Like, he's, he's looking like quite the player, and I'm pretty interested to see how he continues to develop. I'm actually really excited to see how he continues to develop. So let's hop into future seasons, see how things pan out. And of course, if we see the Rockies progress into the playoffs, we'll start focusing on that a little bit. But for now, that's season one, that's rookie year for Tulo. So in the third season, in heading, or from the second off season into the third season, the Rockies have made a big trade, Joey Votto. For James McCann. What a move. So since that move occurred, I figured let's take a look at the team, see what happened for this third season, and kind of do a little check-in, see how these played out for the Rockies. So Jimmy Nelson was signed to a one-year deal. We've got Joey Votto in the last year of his deal. And I mean, was that the right move for the Rockies? We'll have to wait and see how that pans out. G-Man Choi has been brought in. He's been pretty solid for the last couple of years. We've got Corey Dickerson brought in on a one-year deal as well. You guys can see he's doing quite well the last couple seasons as well. Harrison Wenson, eh. And it looks like the rest of the deals were just kind of small deals to make sure the team had quite or enough players to get into the roster. So let's do a little check-in on Troy Tulowitzki here. Second full season, or actually third full season we're about to head into. You can see his fielding stats have gone up along with his hitting attributes. And so far, so good with what I've seen from Tulo in his career. So far, so good. Pretty consistent. And we'll have to wait and see how he continues to develop. But I felt like this was a good little good little check-in point just because they made that acquisition of Joey Votto. I'm a little perplexed by it, but we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. Another big acquisition in terms of prospects this time. The Rockies acquire Alec Bohm for Zach Veen. I wonder if Alec Bohm hops into the lineup right away. It seems as though the Rockies really are kind of in a stuck place and the trades that they're making and the moves in the offseason didn't really pan out. So 80 and 82 and we'll do a quick little check to see where they stand. Third in the division. Disappointing to see. They're not too far off a wild card point wild card spot so we'll have to see how they continue to develop but Troy Slowitzki maybe he's a player that needs to move somewhere else to get that playoff experience we'll take a look at the Rockies see how they're looking pitching wise it doesn't look fantastic Armand Marquez looks great and overall their pitching is pretty lackluster and we'll take a look and see how the offensive lineup is doing Trevor Story looks to be an MVP candidate every single year and then when you look at the rest of the team, I mean, there's definitely offense there, but where is the team lacking? It's definitely looking like the pitching area. And Troy Tulowitzki is looking like an MVP caliber player in the next couple seasons. He is looking like an all-star and he is looking like a crazy good player. Hasn't made an all-star game yet. I have definitely checked to make sure if he's made it in the voting. The OPS is a little low. So if he could definitely bring that up, I definitely think he would he would definitely get some more all-star votes, some more, you know, votes, maybe gold glove or other accolades along the way. But so far, the, the Rockies portion of his career hasn't been fantastic, but he is starting to turn into a pretty solid player. So with season four, it looks like Brendan Rodgers has been traded away. So maybe Tulo is the day in and day out shortstop for the Rockies. This is who I would have thought would have been kind of the main competition for Tulo. But it looks like he's being shipped for a bit more of a younger player in Jeter Downs. They've got Bobby Dahlbeck and as well, and also Brett Martin. So there we go. That's it for season four. We're going to see how it all plays out. And uh, the Rockies still aren't doing too well as a team. But we'll have to wait and see how Tulo does. Another disappointing year for the Colorado Rockies. It looks like pitching just really isn't doing well for them. And even offensively, they're not really doing that great either they did inch their way a little bit closer in terms of wild card performance 
but they're still just not there. No leading league leading stats, and again, no accolades for Troy Tulowitzki. But we'll take a look real quick at how he's progressing. 82 overall at 24 years of age. You can see his fielding stats are just continuing to develop along with his attributes offensively. And here we go for his career statistics. You can see he's hovering around that high teens, low 20s for the home runs. You know, sub 20 for the doubles. Not a lot of strikeouts, an okay amount of walks. It's just the OPS really hasn't cracked a high number since his rookie year. So we'll continue to monitor that career development. But overall, I'm still pretty impressed with what he's being able to do, especially since his hitting stats aren't too fantastic. And we'll have to see how it continues to develop. But it looks like he's going to be the day in and day out shortstop for the foreseeable future, since it looks like the Rockies are kind of starting to trade away some of those uh, middle infield prospects so Tulo looks like he's got his job locked in he's got one more year of arbitration then it looks like he may hit free agency so we'll have to see what the Colorado Rockies do with that maybe they end up trading him also so who knows where he'll end up at the next stage of his career season five and it looks like the Rockies have finally made some moves as well as some players have started to develop and they've won the division 96 and 66 and taking on the winner of the wild cards so the Rockies definitely did well League leading stats, there are none. No awards for Tulo either, but there was something that I did notice. He was sixth, I almost said fifth, but he was sixth for batting average. So it looks like this is kind of some somewhat of a breakout season for him. And as you can see, it looks like players are starting to develop, players are starting to do well, and maybe the Rockies have something working, something brewing here. And I'm kind of interested to see how it all plays out. Jorge Alfaro on the bench, Dahlbeck, Tapia, Daza. This team actually looks really solid. And maybe maybe they do have something doing really well here. And look at Tulowitzki at the age of 25, 90 overall. And look at those attributes. Really good contact. That power is starting to develop really well. Vision, discipline, and clutch. He's definitely a, a really good fielder as well. And you can see... This is definitely his breakout season. He's really starting to make a name for himself with 24 home runs, 30 doubles, 74 RBIs, a 305 average, 397 on base percentage, and an OPS at 886. I'm interested to see how this continues to play out. He's 88 overall with a or 88 overall with a 90 overall morale boost or a two overall morale boost to make him 90. He's a hitting machine, a pressure Kirk. Cooker, he's still got that cannon and that sniper quirk. Oof. Talk about a player who's really starting to find his form and really hitting the prime of his career. So we're going to continue to see how these postseason games pan out. And they may end up getting swept by the Padres, and they do. So first appearance in the postseason wasn't what you'd expect for Tulo. Had a good postseason, though. 364 average with a home run and two RBIs and 11 at-bats. So... It looks like the sky is the limit for Tulo. I'm interested to see if he stays with the Rockies or he takes his talent somewhere else. So one year after winning the postseason, the Rockies completely fall apart. And now they're not making the postseason with a record of 73 and 89. And this, this was the last year of Tulo's arbitration. No league leading stats, no awards once again. And we'll have to see where he heads in free agency so again a really nice looking average 309 with an 866 ops 19 home runs and 27 doubles you can see he's not necessarily an rbi machine but he's doing quite well in terms of average on base percentage slugging and ops and this was his sixth year in the league so where does he go from there he's looking like a gold glover in the field his hitting stats are looking outstanding i'm intrigued to see where he does go because it looks like Colorado isn't panning out for him so do the Rockies extend a crazy offer to this it looks like just a future MVP winner crazy statistics maybe even a future Hall of Famer or does he take his talents to maybe a team that contends maybe a division rival like the Dodgers or does he head somewhere in the AL we'll have to wait and see how this offseason plays it looks as though the Rockies did not sign too low, which I, whoa, absolutely insane. And it looks like there's one offer on the table 
the Chicago White Sox? Does he join that crazy young talented team? Or does maybe another team sneak in with a late offer? Let's see how it goes. Let's see where he ends up after this offseason. So a division rival has come in. And wow, the Diamondbacks have signed him to a five-year, $105.2 million deal. Wow, I did not see that coming. And we're going to see how he does now up against the Colorado Rockies. So the year is 2026. And... We're going to take a quick look around the league, see how the teams are shaping up just to kind of get an understanding of what, you know, what has changed, you know, who's getting better, who's getting worse, and just to get a better understanding of how things are looking and see if uh, Tula made the right move joining the Diamondbacks instead of, say, the Chicago White Sox, where it looks like he would have been competing with Tim Anderson. So maybe that was the right move for him and a young O'Neal Cruz is on the bench with the White Sox as well. But that White Sox team does look pretty stacked. So maybe going to that squad would have been the move to win some championships, to get into the postseason. And instead he decided to join a division rival, which is which is insane in the Diamondbacks. So let's take a look and see what squad he's joining. Is it similar to the Rockies? Is it worse than the Rockies? So here we go, almost there. And He's actually joined a really nice looking squad, a team who's also signed Luis Robert. They've got Austin Riley, Dalton Varsho, Alec Thomas, Christian Robinson. It looks like a really young, talented squad, and I'm interested to see how the pitching staff is lined up as well. Gallon, Espino, Young, Jarvis, and Weaver. The bullpen looks strong. Maybe Tulo did make the right move leaving Colorado and joining the Diamondbacks in Arizona. So here we go at the age of 25, 26, no, 27. We're gonna see how the career of Tulo is now with the Arizona Diamondbacks. In the first year without Tulo, the Rockies made the postseason. They won the division and uh-oh, the Diamondbacks did not make the postseason. So did Tulo make the right move? Let's take a look. Let's see how he did with his new team. And uh-oh. That, that could be could be something crazy. 97 overall. Look at that contact, that power, the vision, the fielding stats. And it looks like he's turning into a really, really good shortstop. Still no accolades, no league leading stats, no awards, gold gloves, MVPs or anything like that. Not even an all-star appearance. But it looks like this is a season to remember. 27 home runs, almost 80 RBIs, and his OPS on base percentage and all that stuff is looking really good so seven years in the league and i mean he's doing all the right things but he's not necessarily like taking over the league but i still think he's got a pretty formidable career going and still only 27 plenty of years left in his legs and let's see how it continues to go so that's the first season check-in with his new squad we're gonna hold off a little bit we're going to sim a couple seasons unless he makes the postseason, maybe a World Series, or of course, wins an accolade. Let's see how it goes. So we have the first quote-unquote accolade of Tulo's career. He's finally got an all-star appearance at the age of 28. There you go. You can see he's actually having quite a good year with a 321 average. I mean... Maybe this is the year he finally pops off, really makes a name for himself. So the Diamondbacks did make the postseason in the year 2027. And it may be the year that Tulo has finally made a name for himself. Really going to make a name in his postseason. Maybe get that World Series win. He was 10th in batting average with a 309 average. And 6th in home runs with 39. Yes, you heard that right. 39 nine Oof. still no awards besides that all-star appearance but you can see potential starting to dip not too sure why but 98 overall 28 years of age fielding stats look amazing hitting stats look outstanding and look at that season still not 100 rbis but 39 home runs 309 average matches his career best with a 986 ops which is his career high and wow he is looking really good. Let's take a look at the war for the career. We're at 36.1 and a nine war on the year. So here we go. How 
can the Diamondbacks do? They're facing the Padres in the wild card. Let's see if they advanced. They did not. Wow. 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 Will Tulo ever make it far into the postseason? Season 11 and Tulo just can't seem to get anything going. Can't get the team going to the postseason. It's just been disappointment after disappointment. And as we head into this 11th season, like I've mentioned, we're looking at the, the D-backs and they look like a really strong squad. But they're just underperforming and Tulo still hasn't made the postseason with the Diamondbacks entering the last year of his contract. You guys can see he's 31 years old. He's probably got one more big contract left in him and he's 96 overall like he's basically capped out he's a hitting machine 2020 vision a walker he's got that sniper and cannon quirk along with quick reflexes look at those attributes i mean he definitely is an all-around player he just doesn't have the speed and when you look at the statistics 248 home runs in his career 226 doubles his average is sitting at 228 and his ops is just under 850 He's been doing all he can. It's just the team's not performing at its best level. So when we hop, a, hop over and look at the war for his career, he's at 45.9. And he's having quite a good year. Quite a good year after year after year. And it's disappointing to see that the D-backs just aren't making the postseason. The Rockies have actually made the postseason more times than the D-backs have. I think the Rockies have made it twice since Tulo has left. So in the last year of his contract, we're about to see if he leaves Arizona in pursuit of that ring or does he stay with the D-backs and uh, try to get them a ring with, you know, basically the rest of his career. We'll have to wait and see. So here we go. 2030. Let's see how it plays out. Another disappointing year for the D-backs. Troy Tulowitzki. I don't see a reason why he'd want to stay with the squad. They haven't finished above third since he's joined the team and haven't even really come close to a postseason appearance. Tulowitzki has started to drop off a little bit. 93 overall, you can see even at the age of 31, he's actually decreasing by quite a bit, which is a little worrisome. And he's still putting up really good numbers, but something's just going on with the team. I don't know if it's pitching or if the offense just isn't producing enough but the team looks solid and looking at the pitching staff it doesn't look too bad it just looks like everybody's underperforming so sadly Tulo's streak of not going to the postseason is currently at five years it's not great to see and really the only accolades he's had are one all-star appearance he hasn't led the league in anything hasn't won a gold glove hasn't won any silver sluggers mvps or anything like that so a career that is putting up really good numbers looks to be kind of overlooked by the fact that there's very little accolades being won and he's not really making the postseason so we'll see where he goes we'll see how this plays out but um i'm i'm kind of hoping that he goes to a different team and starts winning some things so let's keep moving into the postseason We'll see what happens with Troy Tulowitzki. It looks like he's staying loyal to the D-backs. Another five-year contract. I, I don't know. I feel like that's kind of disappointing. I was hoping he was going to go to a new team. And that's it. There it is. It looks like he's going to sit out the... Or he's going to he's gonna see out the, the last good portion of his career with the D-backs. Maybe once this contract expires at the age of 37... He'll get one more shot with another team, but I don't I, I don't know. Unless the D-backs really pull something together, I don't see them winning anything. And it could be a pretty disappointing end to Troy Tulowitzki's career. 2033 and Tulo's contract is coming to an end with the Diamondbacks. But again, once or once again, I should say, there's no playoff appearance. I think he's got I, I said it's coming to an end. I think he's got one or two more years left on it. But I figured at the age of 34, let's take a look at his statistics. And he had a career year, 45 home runs, 102 RBIs, not so many doubles, but the OPS and the average are still hovering at a good spot. Same with the on-base percentage and slugging. Had the most home runs of his career in one season, 45. And look at that home run total, really jumped up. And uh, these are his attributes. So it looks like he's really 
really hitting righties well. Just not so much lefties versus powers or for power. Fielding stats are starting to fall off, and it, it really looks like this is kind of the end for him. Um, I don't really see him getting picked up by another team by the time his contract runs out. Probably going to be down in the low 70s, maybe even high 60s, unless he just starts cranking out some crazy home run numbers and his hitting stats stay high. But right now, it's looking like this is kind of the end of his career, but he's still putting up outstanding numbers, almost 4 100 home runs in his career which is absolutely insane and at the end of his career we'll definitely compare it to what happened in real life to see what is the big difference for Tulo's career resim to what actually happened in real life so again not a postseason appearance but of note that he did finally get some good amount of home runs didn't check if it was the league leading no it was too off too off the league leading stat and obviously he's still not winning awards which is super disappointing not getting gold gloves or anything like that so the career is just putting up really nice numbers potentially could be a hall of famer it's just he's not getting those accolades that would really put him as a first ballot hall of famer so let's continue to sim let's see how these next couple years with the dot or the diamondbacks finish and then maybe another team will take a shot with them so in the last year of his contract in 2035, I think it might be it for Tulo. And when you look at it, the Diamondbacks just missed out on a playoff spot by four games. And it's really sad that Tulo is just, it's almost like a Mike Trout career where there's just no playoff baseball. And that's super disappointing. And I think that might be it. 70 overall, you're sitting at, I think the morale's even boosting him up yeah he's actually 67 overall and the morale's giving him a three overall boost so he's got the platoon quirk and you can see these are his career stats but first let's take a look at the attributes 36 years old 16 years in the bigs and i mean still an okay hitter at best but definitely fallen off and this looks to be it for too low so here you are his final season played 133 games 13 home runs and a 729 ops with a 338 on base percentage so last two seasons of in 2034 and 2033 definitely a little bit of pop in the bat had some of his better years but i think that might be it maybe a team will take a chance on him throw him in like a dh spot or a platoon role Maybe he'll get a World Series ring that way, but I think this is it. I think this is the end of the road for Tula, which is super sad that he never really was able to get a gold glove, a silver slugger, MVP, anything like that, and only one all-star appearance, which is absolutely insane to think about. He's competing with a lot of good shortstops, Tatis. There was like Baez, a couple other short, uh, short stops were moving to the National League as well. So he definitely went up against the best. And unfortunately, he just never was able to get into the All-Star team consistently. So here it is. We're going to see if he retires or if another team picks him up. And if he retires, I'll show you the stats once again. And that'll wrap it up. But maybe another team will take a shot with him. So next year passes by, and I noticed he was signed by a team. It was the Seattle Mariners, but unfortunately, he's definitely at the end of the career. Down to 59 overall, which is absolutely insane. He did get a couple opportunities, 17 games this year. One home run, one double, hit 211 with a 588 OPS. This might be the year Tulo retires. Let's take a peek. All right, 2044, Tulo stuck around. He kept trying to get some game time. Unfortunately, didn't get didn't get any. Uh, 46 years old, 53 overall. And that is the end of the career. Finally closing the storybook on his career. And let's compare how he did in this resim to how he was in real life. So in real life, Tulo's career hits was 1391. He had 264 doubles, 780 RBIs, 225 home runs, a career batting average of 290, and an OPS at 856. So 
not a bad season, especially one that was really ravaged by injuries. But when he was healthy, he played at an exceptionally high level. And when we're sitting here looking at what Tulo did in this career sim, or re-sim, I should say, 355 doubles, 422 home runs, 837 OPS. And we'll take a look at the career war. We have a 70.9. So definitely a really solid career for Tulo here in his second chance in the bigs and no Hall of Fame inductee, sadly. I think if he would have hit a little bit better, maybe a couple more home runs early on in his career, he definitely would have had that 500 mark. And that really would have sealed the deal to get him into the Hall of Fame. But unfortunately, he just fell a little bit short. On top of that, only one all-star appearance and no other accolades. Only two playoff appearances in his career as well. Maybe three. I'm pretty sure it was only two. And those were both with the Rockies early on in his career. So sadly, no Hall of Fame for Troy Tulowitzki. So guys, that's going to bring an end to this first career resim that we've ever done. Of course, in the comment section, let me know how I can improve these. Do you guys want to see some gameplay? Obviously, I wouldn't do like a whole game. It'd be more like a player lock where you just see the highlights. Would you like to see like me get involved a little bit more? So it's not necessarily a rebuild, but it's more of like me kind of trying to improve the team. So that way the player can actually make it to the postseason and things like that. So let me know how I can improve this. Obviously, I want to make it more enjoyable. I want it to be just a video that you guys are looking forward to in the future i definitely have a couple other players in mind that i want to do so let me know how i could improve this make this a little bit more fun make it more enjoyable and i'll definitely make those changes for the next video so i hope you guys did enjoy this career resim of troy tulowitzki if you did make sure you hit that thumbs up down below subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoyed the content that's really about it guys i'll catch you all in the next video peace